More on the potential threat of a Russian invasion of Ukraine. Let's bring in ABC News contributor and retired general Robert Abrams, who commanded U.S. forces in Korea. General Abrams, thanks so much for your time. You heard President Biden Phil, warn. Thanks for having me. It's good to have you here. You heard President Biden warn of a very high risk of a Russian invasion of Ukraine. He says in just a matter of days. From what you're seeing of Russian movements and activity, where would you put the likelihood of invasion now in the coming days? Phil, Phil I think the, the easiest way to say it is that Russia has all the pieces in place right now, today. He's got everything he needs. I think what we're seeing playing out is the Russian forces and Putin are looking to sort of find some way to achieve some sort of tactical uh, overmatch uh, using deception and other things. Uh, but he's got all the pieces in place, so we, we should be ready any day. And I know it's really impossible to get into anyone's head, Vladimir Putin in included, but how real do you think this threat is? I mean, we've been talking for days about a potential bluff to try to force uh, Ukraine in the West to give him security guarantees he's been looking for, most likely and most important for him, for Ukraine not joining NATO. Is this a bluff or not? Phil, this is not a bluff. This is real. And I believe that Vladimir Putin and Russia are going to continue to turn the screws down on Ukraine and the Ukrainian people to include killing Ukrainians uh, as required, as we saw in the shelling today near that elementary school, until he get what he wants. And he's going to continue to coerce them. So we should expect to see steady escalation using a variety of means and capabilities. But this is not a bluff. All right, and, and thinking that way and being a general, it's great we have you here. We want to want to get your uh, opinion on a possible path of invasion that, that Russia would have if they were to go into Ukraine. Here's the map. Can you explain what those would be as far as moving into the country with conventional Russian forces? Sure. So as you can see, the Russian forces, the way they're arrayed, it, it presents multiple options for the army uh, commander on the ground, uh, the ground force commander. And he, he's got the options to be able to attack from multiple directions simultaneously or sequentially. He could use uh, one path, uh, for example, coming from the south using a combination of amphibious operations and attack from Crimea while other directions are conducting what we call a fixing attack or a limited attack just to pin down Ukrainian forces so that they can achieve a penetration in one sector or another. So I think what we've seen here with the array of the Russian forces is Putin has preserved as many options as possible. And again, like I said earlier, he, he's going to look to try to achieve tactical surprise somewhere. He doesn't have the raw numbers in the aggregate. He's going to look where he can achieve decisive massing of his forces, where he has an overwhelming attacker to defender ratio, say in the neighborhood of four or five to one. And that's where we can expect some sort of object or limited objective attack into Ukraine. What about a path that we don't see on that map? Explain what it would look like, <laughs> including the threat of cyber attacks to destabilize Ukraine. Yeah, so we look, we've been watching uh, Russian cyber operations, you know, for the last three or four weeks. And they, that's, you know, he's got unfettered access. He's demonstrated capability. Uh, there's all sorts of uh, additional things that they could do to Ukraine. I, I think one big thing that's missing, um, well, there's a couple of big things missing from those maps, so it's hard to visualize for your listeners. But, but one of them is the use of Russian special forces, Spetsnaz. So these are highly trained. Uh, this is the cream of their crop. Um, they're very, very good at what they do. So we could see potentially a Spetsnaz insertion under cover of darkness into key cities like Kiev under the cover of darkness and a limited cyber attack that took out the power grid aided by Russian agents already on the ground to attack key infrastructure. And again, this would be a, a limited objective, again, intended to drive more uncertainty in the Ukrainian people, make them question their resolve, uh, and completely undermine their government. And again, all back to achieving Putin's objective, which is a commitment, a written commitment that Ukraine can never join NATO. So I think 
And, and by the way, that special operation could be conducted in conjunction, in parallel with one of those conventional attacks. So he's got a number of options available to him um, to be able to continue to turn the screws down on Ukraine and the Ukrainian people. Any of this, as you described, General, would be devastating to Ukraine. So this is the question we ask every day when we talk about this. Do you see a diplomatic path out of this, or have things now escalated with the shelling we're hearing about too far? Well, I, I think there's always a, a diplomatic outcome until until the first major shots are fired. So we, we should not give up hope. We should not give up energy, effort. Um, and not just the United States, but the international community as a whole and the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, everyone should be working full court press to find a diplomatic solution or some sort of off-ramp by which Russia is somehow, some way, you know, satiated their need, their, their so-called security concerns, and at the same time, time we've preserved Ukraine and protected the Ukrainian people. So I, I think there's still room for diplomacy. It, we're, we're not at the end of it yet, but it's going to require everyone to give way together in the international community to be able to get us to an offer. Retired General Robert Abrams, we really do appreciate you taking the time. Thanks for the expertise tonight. Absolutely. Thank